Look, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa, Craig, tone it down a little bit. What's going on? Why are you so excited? I'll tell you why I'm excited, ladies and gentlemen, because I am pretending. <laughs> I bring nothing to this show <laughs> other than a positive attitude. <laughs> Which is something that you don't see much on television now with all the negativity around. <laughs> <laughs> God, this, this is some kind of like cheap... Uh, what's that guy's name in 60 Minutes again? Rooney. Andy Rooney, yeah, I'm like a kind of low-rent Andy Rooney if you can imagine such a thing. <laughs> uh, don't you hate it when people don't have a positive attitude? <laughs> I think young people are evil. <laughs> I don't think young people are evil. I think that they're easily led by evil types. That's worth discussing. Go ahead, then. <laughs> Do you know what this show could use? More special effects. That's what I think. Ooh. <laughs> like that. Ooh. No. Or. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. A giraffe. <laughs> it's, this is not actually anything to do with the show. We're just giving our director his annual review. <laughs> Do we have a picture of Paul McCartney? <laughs> yeah? That's pretty much it, I think. Isn't it? Oh, you know what is coming, though? I'm very excited to tell you in a couple of weeks' time. Hey, where are you looking? Knock it off! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> now, what was that there? Look. Oh, look, you can tell there's no roof on this building. <laughs> hey, you know, I like this. This is what it this is what it'd be like if Tom Cruise hosted this show. <laughs> I know more about things than you do. Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by T Mobile. The coverage you need at the price you want. Great day for America, everybody. 
Yes, it is. Very, yeah. It's very good news today for very good news today for Elton John. He got out of hospital sooner than they expected. He got uh, he got a bout of E. coli, but now he's fine. In fact, a team of doctors gathered around Elton and gave him an early release. <laughs> <laughs> ah, double entendres. <laughs> ah, my stocking tree. You know, a man in South Carolina got three years in jail for having sex with a horse. With a horse! <laughs> he had sex with a horse! <laughs> Even worse, now he has to make alipony payments. <laughs> I wish I had a band. They'd have gone crazy there with that one. <laughs> New, oh, Alipony, you the band! Oh, you're the band! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right, that's it. Fun's over. <laughs> the holiday season is officially upon us because the movie Christmas Carol opens today. Yes, that's right. The Christmas movies are being released earlier and earlier every year. <laughs> Craig, you're right. <laughs> We're completely, quietly listening to you. <laughs> In a way which is distractingly real. Hmm, I can see his point. They are. They're, <laughs> they're, I'm sorry, I'm not used to having people listening to me. They are, they're, they're, no, they're being released earlier every year. Now, now I'm thinking Al Gore will blame it on the global warming. I'm not so sure, but... The new uh, movie is the animated version of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. <laughs> Does Jim Carrey really need to be animated? He's pretty cartoony already, isn't he? I'm sure he'll tone it down a bit for the movie. Anytime Jim Carrey doesn't make his ass talk in a movie, you know. <laughs> that's the one he wants an Oscar for. I'd like, an, I'd like to see his ass win an Oscar. It'd be a fantastic acceptance speech. <laughs> I'd like to thank my pants. I promised myself I wasn't going to crap. <laughs> anyway, it's the Christmas Carol's the story. You know the story of the Christmas Carol, right? A man is visited by four ghosts at night. I'm occasionally visited by a ghost at night. <laughs> the ghost of a burrito. <laughs> ah, fart jokes. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for you and double entendres. <laughs> Anyway, they've remade The Christmas Carol millions of times, haven't they? they, they most recently, it was The Ghost of Girlfriend's Past. Uh, that was uh, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, he... <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> anyway, I, th I can't remember what happened. I think he played a serial killer who was visited by the ghosts of the dead girlfriends or something. That... I wasn't really paying attention. I was distracted by his abs. <laughs> Then they made a version of, uh, of The Christmas Carol with Bill Murray called Scrooged. Not very believable, though. It was about a cheap, hard-hearted TV executive who wouldn't fix a leaky roof before Christmas. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, who would believe that crap? <laughs> There's a new version of uh, Christmas Carol in 3D, and who doesn't want to see an old man in a nightgown in 3D? <laughs> Not this soldier, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, when Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol 150 years ago, I wonder if he thought, you know, this would be much better if you had to wear glasses with one red lens and one blue lens. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, I know what you're going to say, but wait a minute, Craig, Dickens introduced social realism to English literature. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's true, he did. But he never got to see 3D images of Jim Carrey getting hit in the nuts. That would be awesome. <laughs> I like a Christmas Carol. I like the story of Christmas Carol, but I never understood some of it. You know when he says, bah humbug? <laughs> what does that mean? Is Scrooge calling people humbugs? Or is he announcing his own humbuggery? <laughs> <laughs> humbuggery? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Buggery. <laughs> Nowadays, no one uses the phrase bah humbug. Bah humbug? 
<laughs> I'm so crap at this job. <laughs> No, you know, nobody says bah humbug anymore. You know, there is a place up in Hollywood uh, Boulevard, though, they'll say, ah, bum hug. <laughs> Tell them I sent you, they'll sweep your chimney. <laughs> I, maybe... <laughs> maybe... Maybe Dickens just made up bah humbug. You know, people forget he was paid by the word Dickens. He was paid by the word. So sometimes he would just make up words. You know, Dickens could never write, uh, the man went up the stairs. He would write, Mr. Crumbly Dumbly crept up the crickledy, crickledy staircase. I wish I get paid word for word for this crap. I tell you, if I get paid for every word I said, I would be crumumbulous in my <laughs> presumption of this fat wizardly. Anyway, Christmas Carol isn't just about Scrooge. The most lovable character is uh, Tiny Tim, a criswicketive little boy <laughs> whose leg was all higgledy-piggledy. <laughs> Dickens, in the book, Dickens describes, this is true, Dickens describes Tiny Tim as being lame. Now, back then, being lame meant people would pity you. Today, if you're lame, you just get a talk show. But back then, <laughs> it was very different. Do you know what I like about this listening thing? <laughs> that it's really helping with my campaign to introduce the awkward pause back to television. <laughs> and also the listening makes room for this. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh. Uh. Or, or this. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Or this. Take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> My uh, first guest tonight is in a new film. <laughs> it's called The Men Who Stare at Go. I think I like this. <laughs> Please welcome Ewan McGregor, everybody. Stop doing that! Man. No, I know. Every time you're on the show, it's all that big run around there. I'm getting too old for this crap. I like it. I like it. It gets us, <sighs> it gets us going to a good start. Where are the Scottish people? They're Scottish hey! people. Yeah, yeah. Hey! All yeah. right. Yeah. That's three of them. Three of them there, and two of them here. How many? Who, who's left in Scotland? There's <laughs> Philip. Not many people. No, not many. No. Wait a minute. What's it? Have you got sunglasses with you? Yes. You've changed, man. You think? <laughs> yeah. You've gone Hollywood. I needed them in Glasgow. I was just working in Glasgow, and I needed these quite a lot. Yes. Really? What, to remain anonymous? Uh, no, because it was very sunny there. No, come on. Let me try them on then. Go on. Are they prescription? No. All right, then. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, know what? you know what I look like? I look like one of these old guys in Florida with the big robot glasses. <laughs> <laughs> You need the sidey bits yeah, for that. Yeah, I, I, the I Florida want to get them. The, the side parts. Have you ever been down to Florida? Oh, come on. It's just a pair of glasses. <laughs> have I been, I've been down in Florida, yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I was there when I was a kid, and then, and then I went to a very strange place there when I was working down in um, Alabama. That's we not went, Florida. No, but it's close. <laughs> okay. And we went down, and we went down, we stayed in this place called Watercolor. Oh. That's what it's called, the town. And it's right next door to the town where they shot the Truman Show. You know that, that film with Jim Carrey? Oh, yeah. And so it's all very strange, uh, not quite... It doesn't feel... It feels, like a very, it feels like a big film set, but people retire there and live there. I'm going to do that. Yeah, you yeah, should yeah, get a place no, there. I'm, I'm going to do that, In and I'm going to wear those big nylon socks. Play golf. Yeah. Do you play I golf? I don't play golf. Do no. you play golf? You'd have to if you live there, though. No, but you're with Scottish. With your shades you, and you your... You play golf. Oh, you Scots, you play golf, don't you? Oh, us Scots, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
A lot of you Americans play golf too, no, though, no, don't no, you? No, we don't. No, no, no. I'm a Floridian now, mate. All oh, right, right. I've decided. Not a true Ninian. No, a uh, true Ninian? True Ninian. People say true. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, 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 these people are from true, which are. is a town in Scotland. Exactly. It, it's a limerick, isn't it? L limericks in Ireland. Oh, no, no, no. There's a limerick. There's poems about. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like this? I think I've seen it before, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Does I it spray it... at me when you... No. No, no, no. It's not a joke thing. It's not like, oh, <laughs> smell my flower. You know, like you... By the way, when I say smell my flower, you know. <laughs> What's underneath that's censored? Uh, I drew a penis on it one night. Oh, uh, you did? Um... High bro. High bro comedy. You know, I, I, the lights don't work, things yeah, fall apart. Yeah, no, it was terrible. Yeah? Yeah, it happened, oh, oh about oh, a, week a week ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> so um, have you? Why well, do you have Purell hand stuff? It's swine flu season. That's why oh. I've got the Purell. Yeah, yeah. You want some? Yeah, thank you. No, oh no, well, that's a lot. <laughs> that's swine flu and bovine flu <laughs> and bird flu and everything. <laughs> oh, that's, that's probably. But here, wipe it on. Uh, wipe it on. Oh, there. Thank there you go. <laughs> that's better. Would you? What are you doing? You're on a... It's, it's, a, it's a puppet! <laughs> Plus, it's Purell. It's in no way harming the puppet. No, it's cleaning the pig. It's cleaning the pig and saving it from itself. <laughs> <laughs> now, how have you been? I've been very good. I've been very busy. Really? Wait, making the films and Making such? films. Are you making a film in Glasgow? That must yeah, have been nice. Yeah, I did a film called... Uh, the Last Word, it was called. I, I hesitate, because it may not be called that at the end of the day, but with David McKenzie, who I made a film with uh, called Young Adam some years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a dirty film, yeah. if you don't mind me saying so. You... I was... remember I came to see you when you were shooting that. That's right. You were that's in the... right. In the... Yeah, yeah, in yeah. That little, you were in that little room with that... Doing the... Yeah. You were there. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was filthy, that film. Oh, it was a very oh. dirty film. Filthy. I was like, good for you, son. Good for <laughs> you. I don't think my dad's yet seen it, you know? No, no. I, would it not be very embarrassing doing a film that dirty? No, I, no, I didn't find it embarrassing. You went through a phase of every film you were in. You were taking your clothes off, yeah. though, didn't you? Yeah. I like to do it, you know, because I, 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 women are always expected to be naked. Yes. And I like to try and be naked in films and not... And, and, and not be a have woman. The, ...have the woman not be naked. So you like to be naked and have the woman it's not be naked. It's a feminist thing that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Sometimes we Americans have to call... <laughs> ...on you, <laughs> It was filthy, that film. Anyway, this one we did, the last word, wasn't so filthy. No. And it was great to be at home. I hadn't been in Scotland for that length of time in years and years. And I was there for about uh, nine, eight or nine weeks. And it was, it was sunny, you say? There were some really sunny days, well, yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Has it changed a lot? I haven't been there in a while. I think it has changed a bit. I, I found it I found really pleasant to be there, really lovely. And I, I, I had a bicycle and cycled everywhere through Glasgow. And um, I, I liked it very much, yeah. yeah. No, it was good. It and was what's good. the goat film about, then? The goat film is about, um... <laughs> Do you... It's not filthy. It's not that kind of... It's not that kind of film with goats. I, don't I think you what... just lost half your audience there, <laughs> You'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. No, what happens yeah. then? Yeah. <laughs> um... I don't know what that meant, but no, anyway, it's it was, right. I, don't, I, I, mean, I laughed like I did, but I had no idea. <laughs> I was like, eh. I don't know, oh, it must no, be some old Scottish thing. No. Eh. It's a goat has a be a billy goat has a beard, right? Yeah. And then I tried to make the noise of a goat. Yeah. Is that what you do in the film? Because I'm looking forward to it if it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a film about a secret. Uh, oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> It's very important. <laughs> it's just a late night talk show. What you do is you come out and talk and you're about the, the you're film. You're a movie I'm star and you talk about the film and, and you right. say that everybody in the film loves each other and everyone in show business gets along and right. bloody blah. blah, blah. blah. Then you go. That's what we do. <laughs> we had a great time making men who stare at goats and all the actors really got on. Right. And we had go. a lovely time and it's a great film and you'll all get a lot out of it. Right. <laughs> That's pretty and much. And no goats were harmed in the making of our film. <laughs> <laughs> what, happens? <laughs> what, happens with, what happens with the goats then? Do you just stare at goats for, for two hours? Well, 90 minutes. 90 minutes, so it's a <laughs> short film about staring at goats. It's a film about 
a secret section of the American military that was set up post-Vietnam to look into psychic, um, psychic research. There was rumours that the Russians were bombarding the American president with negative energy, and the Americans wanted to get, uh, you know, catch up, they thought, with the Russians. So they, they experimented in remote viewing and, and um, psychic research and lots of new age kind of things. It was... A it's lot of it's, it's quite it's quite extraordinary that it was. And being, where did the goats come in then? The goats come in because. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being unreasonable? What the hell? Why? It's like the movie's called The Man Who Stared at Goats. You go bloody blah, blah, America, Russia, the after Vietnam. I'm like, yes, yes, but where's the bull la goat? Where's the goat, man? <laughs> That's all I want to know. Question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. The special forces had a room full of goats. Right. Finally. Right. And uh, they trained these goats to go into battle. No. They shot the goats. They shot the goats? They shot the goats and then tried to save the goats. It was a way to train the special forces to, uh, in first aid. So they would shoot bolt guns through the, the goats' knees and stuff. <laughs> Which isn't funny. And I don't advocate doing that. That's not nice. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get some letters from goat-loving Americans, buddy. <laughs> anyway, and then they would bandage up the goats and it would, pr it would teach the soldiers how to... Because ultimately that's saving people's lives in the theatre of war, right? Now, you can't wait, deny that. Wait, wait, you wait. You can't deny that. Anyway, that's not what the film's about. The film is about... So and, goats, then, and you're one goats. of the men that stare at the goats while they they're getting get better. The goats. the goats are in there. So we, instead, the, Ameri the soldiers would... They would try and... <laughs> 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 they, they, the idea was the goats were in one room, they paint numbers on the goats. Right. And next door... They there was shoot a guy these going goats like and then they start painting them? This is awful! <laughs> the guy going, trying to make the goat fall over in the other room, just using the power of his mind, OK? And that was about... That was the men who stare at goats bit. And one of them apparently did collapse. And then they said, OK, now try and kill the goat. And that's where it all started going wrong, because that's, that's not a nice thing to do. And but it's perfectly acceptable on. to shoot them in the knees. <laughs> yeah. Because I guess... Sounds like a big Christmas family winner to me! <laughs> <laughs> I just could and tell hear me, the, is there a song I could just hear the producer on the phone me? later on tonight going, what the... What are you talking no, about? No, no, <laughs> Don't swear on this show. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. You and McGregor, sorry. everyone will be right back. Oh, no, that's your line. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, ah. I didn't know they had these. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh. I'm not going to get asked back, am I? No. OK. Uh, no, of course you Was that our last be... little dance? No. We, we, we... We'll do it again. Yeah. How flying? I didn't uh, learn my... didn't get my pilot's licence yet. Well, I got mine. Did you? Yeah. How, how, how was the test? Very hard. Is it scary? Very frightening, yeah. sweat? Yeah. And, uh, and at the end of it, the, uh, the FAA uh, examiner, he said, well, uh, congratulations, you've passed. You're, you got your pilot uh, licence. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, really, I said, are you sure? I mean, because I can now legally take anybody up in the, this airplane and fly them around. And, and I, I mean, I won't because, not unless I, I don't like them. Right. Because, <laughs> you know. It, you didn't feel like you were that. I'm not confident yet. I'm, I'm, I mean, but now I've been flying around a bit in helicopters. You ever done that? Oh, really? Oh, man. That's a whole new game. So did you go straight from getting your pilot's license to trying to do something else? As opposed to enjoy the one you just learnt to do. <laughs> you know, you're always judging me when you're here, <laughs> aren't you? you? Come here with your judgy, judge, judge. <laughs> no, I I'm don't just judge interested. you for hurting goats. Listen, I should make it clear that no goats, no goats were harmed no in were the making hard. of our film, and nor, nor do you see goats getting shot through the knee. It's just a fact of life that they do train on animals so that when it comes to saving a human being in the theatre of war, they can do it. Thank you. <laughs> and tell me, tell <laughs> me, Gregor, tell me, you and the chairman of the Goat Society of America. <laughs> Is this, an, is this another one of your feminist causes, this...? <laughs> mm. I don't know. Oh. Well, good times. Anyway. Yeah. You've got a, you've got a little drink there, if you want it. We're out of time, though.
Where's uh, the drink? Yeah, yeah, look, oh, look here. Oh, what? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, no, look. Here, you want some ice? Right. It's OK. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, I, I, no, no, I'm off. Are we I'm live off. enough? You want to be no, live no, enough, no. eh? Go on, take oh. a drink. Take a drink. <laughs> oh, go on, have one night. Everyone else is at it. Come yeah, on. Yeah, come on. All right, but we're done. That's Thanks it. for having me. It was great. Well, it was lovely to be, uh, to be seeing you mm. again with the great goat news. Will you, all go, will you all go and see it, though? Even though I didn't do a very good job at selling it, please go and see it. It's a great film. <laughs> We'll be right back. I'm one of them people that stands too close. <laughs> I wonder if, you know them people that stand too close and like, hey, really nice to meet you, those people? <laughs> I wonder if they, they get too close to the TV. <laughs> like flies. You know when flies land on the television? The fly comes up and it lands right on the television and I want to see, you can't see it from that close. Get back a bit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got 50 eyes, I'm good. <laughs> My next guest is the creator of the CSI franchise. Basically, he owns CBS. He's also the author... <laughs> Of the, uh, of the new book, Level 26. Now, if you look in the cover, look, they've got the E round the other way. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 very good, yeah. Level 26 is in bookstores now. Please welcome Anthony Zyker, everybody. Anthony Zyker. It's nice to... Welcome to the show. It's nice Thank to you. see you. Fantastic. I, I, what is this about, then, the Level 26? Why is the E round the wrong way? Well, that's, that's Mark Echo's design as an art director. He got a little squirrely with it. But you know, do you know there's 25 levels of evil in the world? Really? 25 levels. <laughs> Which level are you on? <laughs> I'm level 26. Le uh, level 20, so this is about the 20, the, is that the most evil evil, There's then? 25 levels of evil in a serial killer. And this is level 26, because this guy on the cover yeah. is a forensic proof of villain that wears a latex body condom. Can I say condom on the air? It's your network, see you... Ooh-la-la! Hi, <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I always do. Uh, so, uh, it, it's a digi-novel. Now, talk me through the digi-novel. It's what not a book, it? it's a digi-novel. Well, it looks like... Uh, 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 uh. But there's, paper, there's, there's... paper, paper, <laughs> paper. Here's the difference. You can read the book cover to cover. Right. And it reads like any traditional book. But right. what makes a digi-novel is this. Every 25 pages that you read, you have the option to log into a website, enter a code, and it unlocks a piece of motion picture footage which will bridge you from one chapter to another. That's awesome. So sometimes it's a, it's a crime scene, a, a, a crime scene, or it's a, a horror oh, scene. And then you, to watch the 8 millimeter film that occurs... Oh, the film countdown flickered across the screen. 10, 9, 8, And seven. then the film that they see in the book is you can actually see the film. Yes, I've directed all the cyber bridges. There's about 20 in the book. It's kind of like getting a movie inside the book. Wow. That's it's, actually it's, really it's smart. It's for slow readers like myself. <laughs> I, no, really, no wonder you're rich, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's really clever. And that, when does that? Every 25 pages? I wish I'd done that in my book. My book's right. crap. It's <laughs> just stuff about me, stuff about me. But could you imagine? Or me. Could you imagine Charles Dickens as a digital novel? Charles Dickens would probably have embraced it, I think. Dickens was, uh, you know, he was, a, he was an innovator in his time. Do you like Dickens? I do like him. But yeah. would Charles Dickens have had. What? An iPhone? An iPhone. Yeah, or an iTouch, no? Bro. Is, is that an iPhone or an iTouch? This is an iTouch. May I touch it? Yes, please. <laughs> And guess, and guess what? There's the app. So there's a, an app for the... How does the app work for the book, then? Do you, you go on... You have well, the, 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 the app is all of this inside the book, so you can look, download the app, you can flip the pages, watch the side of bridge right there. It's all in one console versus the book. You put it down, log in, and watch the bridges. So everything's in one device in the iPhone, in iTouch. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> This guy's really thinking about stuff. <laughs> See, if you had brought half of what he brings to every... <laughs> this, is, and if this is producing, this is thinking it through. No, mm, I don't know if we can afford to fix the light. Ooh la la! This is real! 
And if you want one, yeah, if you want one, I do want one. Then you have to do a hashtag a level twenty six on Twitter. Hashtag? What does that mean? It's a big, huge contest right now, breaking on your show live. What? I don't even know what hashtag means. It's like a <laughs> hashtag to me is the price tag well, it's on not, your it's drugs. Not a hash yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> no. It's not you. So uh, you, you put hashtag on the Tweety Bird and up pops your iPhone? <laughs> you log on to Tweety Bird, yeah, tw Twitter, hashtag, dot, have a, hashtag level 26. We're going to give away one of these. What, what uh, an iTouch? With an app on it. Oh. How, is the app free if you have an iTouch? No, it costs some money. How much? Twelve ninety eight. Twelve ninety eight. How did you come up with twelve ninety eight? What kind of a figure is that? <laughs> the book retails for about eighteen dollars online, but right. for the since it's not a tangible, you know, piece of artistry on here, it's a little cheaper. A little cheaper. So the book's more expensive than the digi. It is. It is. <laughs> How the much for the full body latex condom? That, <laughs> those suits are three thousand dollars a piece, and we rip three on the shoot. Oh, because you, you actually, there's... Oh, well, it's custom made. The guy that actually is in that suit, his name is Squeagle. And here's the funny part. He is the, in the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's most flexible man. His name is Daniel Browning Smith, and he puts himself into a pretzel. It's the scariest book on the planet. Could be. This is the best thing we've ever had on this show. <laughs> Like, really? <laughs> Mostly people just come on and go, yeah, I made a movie, everybody loves each other, go see it. This is crazy! Well, you, you, you saw some of, some of it with CSI, and now this is the next iteration of evil. Level 26? Level 26. I'm going to read it. I hope so. But I don't know where. <laughs> don't read, An don't read it alone. Very, it's very impressive. Thank, thank, you for, thank you for being here. Anthony Zyker, everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, look, sometimes album covers really freak you out. Look at the back of this album cover, look. <gasps> oh, it's a woman falling into a giant piano. <laughs> That's like level 28 of evil right there. Right? <laughs> My next guest is a lovely singer-songwriter. That's her legs right there, actually. She's here performing that's how you pronounce it. From our new uh, album, Far. Please welcome the very lovely, the very talented Regina Spector, everybody. Regina Spector. It's like forgetting the words to your favorite song. You can't believe it. so easy and a word so sweet you can't remember you try to feel Steal. He opens a window oh, 
25 levels of evil. <laughs> Level 26. <laughs> Most amplifiers go up to 10. <laughs> this goes to 11. <laughs> you know what I loved about Anthony? Uh, he came out and he did this fantastic... told us all about this uh, digi book. Left the book, took the iPhone. Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it for this week, really, isn't it? And you know what I'm excited? I'm making a big announcement uh, right now. Uh, in about two weeks, three weeks? Three we're, weeks. Hav we're having three weeks. Magic Week is back. Yes. <laughs> Magic Week. Yes. I also am not that excited about it. <laughs> but people love it. You know, people do. Well, magicians. <laughs> That's only people who like it. They're like, oh, it's time for me to be on TV again. Twice a year, we have Magic Week, and magicians come here and ply their wares. And you know, there are only 25 levels of magic. <laughs> Which is more than enough. <laughs> well, we're done. <laughs>